GAF-UNDP promoting access to clean energy services in St. Vincent's and the Grenadines, PACES project would be conducting a two-day workshop at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs conference room on January 18th to the 19th, 2007, from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. daily. The event is being staged in collaboration with the GIS through the Renewable Energy and Energy Efficiency Technical Assistance RETA program as part of the support to the energy program of CARICOM Secretariat. Renewable Energy Renewable energy is a term used to describe a group of energy technologies derived from sources that do not deplete or that can be replenished within a human's lifetime. The most common renewable energy sources are Solar, which harnesses the sun for energy. Wind, which utilizes the motion of wind to create electricity. Hydropower, which uses moving water to generate power. Biomass, which refers to a large group of technologies that use living or recently living organisms and waste to create energy. Tidal, tidal uses the rise and fall of the tides to create electricity. Geothermal, which uses the internal heat from the earth for energy. Nuclear energy is not considered a renewable energy source. It is considered an alternative energy source. While renewable energy accounts for a minority share of the world's energy supply, it is also the fastest growing energy supply on the planet. Renewable energy is sought after because it is a clean source of energy, meaning that it does not directly produce greenhouse gas emissions or air pollutants. While renewable energy sources are better for the environment, they also face several challenges the main ones being low efficiencies, high capital costs, and intermittency. That's renewable energy. Speaking on radio, earlier this week, Minister of Transport and Work, Senator Julian Francis, said that at times he can feel the hole that is in, the, that is in his chest of the NDP supporters. Senator Francis said that he's deliberately plays the ULP songs not only to please ULP supporters, but to put pressure on the NDP supporters to remind them that the ULP is in government, having won every single election since 2001, and having gained the popular vote in every single election since 1998. I know that this is a daunting fact for the NDP, hence we understand they're running around like fowls with their heads chopped off said Francis on radio. He stressed while the NDP is hoping to unseat the government through protests, the only way to unseat a government is through the polls during an election. Unemployment in St. Vincent's and the Grenadines is expected to be in the region of 17% and above in 2017. The information was derived from a new report made public by the International Labour Organization, ILO. The ILO report notes that in several Caribbean communities, CARICOM countries, the percentage of those who are looking for work but unable to find jobs in 2017 will range from 4 to 6 percent in Trinidad and Tobago to above 17 percent in islands like St. Vincent and St. Lucia. According to News 784, in Caribbean countries like Guyana, Haiti, Barbados, and Suriname, the percentage of people looking for work is between 9 to 13 percent. The figure is between 13 to 17 percent in Bahamas. Discontent with the social situation and lack of decent job opportunities are both factors that play a role in a person's decision to migrate, the report noted. The International Labour Organization said that global unemployment rate is expected to rise modestly in 2017 to 5.8% from 5.7% in 2016. The report said this would represent 3.4 million more unemployed people globally, bringing total unemployment to just above 201 million in 2017. St. Vincent's and the Grenadines Consul General in Toronto, Fitz Huggins, through his Drop a Dollar campaign, has raised over 15000 that will go to the Argyle International Airport, AIA. The campaign took three years to raise the money. Meanwhile, Huggins has called on local authorities to start taking security at the AIA seriously as to prevent a repeat of January 2016 fire that destroyed housing materials at Public Works Storage Facility in Arnesville. Persons may soon have another option when it comes to flying in and out of St. Vincent's and the Grenadines. Guyanese-based charter services, Rurema Airways, 
Chief Executive Officer Captain Gerald Govera said in a YouTube video that his company is hoping to provide charters out of Argyle after it opens on February 14th. He added the government had a lot of vision in building the new airport and Rurema is currently in talks with local officials to use the AIA as a hub. The line is going to be expanding our operations in St. Vincent. St. Vincent just finished building a brand new spanking modern airport in the middle of the Caribbean Sea. Um, and we have always had a good relationship with St. Vincent and the government of St. Vincent. And so even today as I speak to you, my son who is in Antigua, we just did a flight to Antigua last week. On his way back, he's landing in St. Vincent. He's going to be meeting with government officials um, because we really want to give effect to this whole concept of CARICOM and working together. And I think the government of St. Vincent had a lot of vision in building this new airport. Um, brand spanking new 11,000 foot runway with jetways and modern terminal buildings and we are going to be working with them in our airlines. Our airlines are going to be going into St. Vincent, connecting St. Vincent and Guyana and using St. Vincent as a hub across the Caribbean. So this year is going to be very, very exciting. <laughs> Police are investigating a fire that is said to have killed an elderly man and destroyed his home in Rose Hall yesterday morning. Reports are that 70-year-old Cecil Ferdinand was killed when his home was destroyed by fire. Police discovered burnt remains and checks are being carried out to ascertain if the body is that of Ferdinand. There was an accident earlier this morning at Richmond Hill in which a vehicle ran off the road. The vehicle involved ended up in the backyard of Elizabeth Brown Early Childhood Development Center in Beachmont. It appears as though no serious injuries were sustained. Up to press time, AKTV News was unable to get more information. Vincentian Prime Minister Ralph Gonzalez is reiterating his disdain for economic citizenship programs being operated by some member states of the OECS. Dr. Gonzalez, in his latest comment on the matter, emphasized that his country's citizenship is not for sale. However, regional broadcaster Vincentian Jerry George told WINFM that Prime Minister Gonzalez's position on the matter is hypocritical. The CIP programs of St. Kitts and Nevis, Antigua and Barbuda, and Dominico were criticized as not being transparent enough and not paying enough attention to the due diligence aspects of the programs. In a recent edition of CBS 60 Minutes, Georges is supportive of regional states having economic citizenship programs. The Prime Minister of St. Vincent is one politician who remains averse to what he terms selling of passport and citizenship. As far as Dr. Ralph Gonzalez is concerned, other OECS leaders are free to adopt such programs, but not St. Vincent and the Grenadines. For him, it is a matter of principle. The highest office in the land is that of citizen, higher than Prime Minister, higher than Governor General. It is not a commodity for sale. The passport is the outward sign of the inward grace of citizenship and that too is not for sale. When people tell me I can make a lot of money from it, there are lots of things you can make money from which you would not necessarily get engaged in. But as I say, I am not criticizing any of my brothers in the other countries who want to go there. That is their right. We agree to disagree on this one. Sports News up next.